So again, good morning. And today I'll continue on the theme of samadhi, the fourth of the five faculties. And I have a lot of reverence for samadhi. Somehow, uh, this samadhi represents a wonderful state of being, of wholeness, of settleness, of well-being, that um, somehow makes me feel whole in this world, or, or settled, or peaceful, beyond or wider than anything I could think. And that samadhi, at the very best, is um, kind of like entering into sacred ground. So maybe it's a little dangerous to treat samadhi in such a lofty way, but I do have that kind of feeling for it. And um, the... um, So yesterday I talked about uh, two aspects of concentration, samadhi, both that are preparations for developing concentration and it's also part and parcel of concentration. But thinking of it as a preparation is to, um, be to arrive, to initiate the process of concentration, is to um, uh, relax, let go, and let go into being centered, to find a center within you. And the idea is to compose yourself on that center, to be settled. And this is an alternative way of talking about being focused. Um, uh, Many times concentration is associated with focus, and so to bring a focus of the mind on the breathing, for example, or whatever you're concentrating on. And that's fine. But it tends, it lends itself to kind of being in the control tower of the head and kind of with the mind's eye looking and like a laser beam or something. And um, the, in, the, in the Buddha's teaching, samadhi and, and samadhi and is, a, is a state, is an initially is a all fully embodied state. It's our whole body is suffused with the qualities of concentration. It's not only a mental act. So to talk about composing ourselves, uh, to me, is a, that language is a, f- a physical language. We compose our whole body, we settle our body, we, we align our body and settle. And, uh, and in that aligning and settling, uh, we begin the process of concentration. And it works particularly well, I think, if we compose ourselves on the breathing or compose ourselves on some center of gravity within. Um, So it is a kind of reorienting ourselves, maybe from how we usually are thinking and doing or being in the world, to something maybe that for some people is maybe counterintuitive or even foreign, the idea that we would be settled and composed with our body here and now, and not kind of thinking about things and wanting things and avoiding things with our mind. And um, so to um, the, um, the um, so with a kind of relaxing, letting go, centering ourselves on the breathing, then uh, when, we, when we kind of have that initial beginning, then there are two movements of uh, concentration practice that are kind of initiating and engaging parts of concentration practice that can go hand in hand with mindfulness practice. It doesn't have to be separate. And in the ancient language, it's called vitaka and vichara. And in my, you know, the way my brain makes kind of plays with words and sounds, that vitaka to me uh, sounds like a knock, tuck, tuck, knock, knock. And uh, it's the initial kind of showing up and connecting. Knock, knock, I'm here. 
open the door or here and I'm going to be, you know, I'm letting you know that I'm here. And, um, and the, um, uh, and chara, the sound of it to me, chara, I like to kind of stretch the A, is more like lingering or staying or coursing or surfing on something. There's continuity there. Um, so there's a, so the vitaka is that sometimes it's called the initial application of mind, of attention. It's, it's bringing the attention to the focus. So if we're focusing on the breathing, if that's the center of gravity for meditation, and the mind wanders off and goes someplace else, then uh, the very act of bringing the mind back and reconnecting to the breathing, knocking on the breath, here I am. Um, and that initial kind of, just a, you know, the, con- the initial connection is just a momentary thing, just here I am. And, um, and it does involve a little bit of rudimentary thinking. In fact, the word vitaka uh, can in Pali also mean thinking. Uh, if you notice your mind is wander off, there is some kind of cognitive working of the mind that says, okay, let's come back, let's reconnect to the breathing. And how we have those thoughts and how we do that coming back to the breathing uh, is actually very important. It, it's maybe more important than actually returning to the breath. Because we want to make the return be something that's welcomed and enjoyable and calming in and of itself. I know that sometimes I've jerked my mind back, uh, and which kind of, kind of violently, i could be feeling bad, or oh, there I am again drifting off and jerk it back. And that's more agitating. I've also sometimes pounced back on the breath, kind of, okay, now I'm going to really going to bore into it. And that also is actually more agitating than calming. So how can we come back in a calm way and reconnect to the experience of breathing? Um, it's a little bit in, uh, maybe instructive that as far as I know in the ancient language of the Buddha, in the teachings, there is no equivalent idea that we use in English of coming back to your breathing, returning to your breathing. And uh, it is maybe, you know, a little bit of it's a metaphor uh, to bring the mind back. The mind doesn't go anywhere. The mind's always here. Um, and to the, the metaphor of bringing it back maybe lends itself to a certain kind of agitation or movement, moving the mind or feeling that movement. Maybe vitaka is uh, noticing that we're drifting off and then having this thought of where's the breathing? And then allowing the breathing to knock on you. Here I am. Knock, knock. So there's no movement. It's more of a relaxing and opening and making that initial connection. So that's a conscious, somewhat intentional movement. Okay, I'm back. Here I am. Then um, once we're there, some people are very good at this coming back or connecting and to the breathing or to the focus of meditation. And uh, once they're there, they kind of don't apply themselves so much anymore. And so then the mind wanders off again. The second aspect of concentration is vichara, which is sustaining the attention on the breathing or sustaining it on the object of attention. Lingering, hanging out there. The analogy that's used in the, one of them, the ancient texts, is um, vitaka is placing a cloth on a bronze, a bronze bowl, and vichara is rubbing it, cleaning it, polishing it. Or and maybe a, even a kind of more poetic image that's used is a, um, a bee f- uh, landing on a flower, and then vi- that's vitaka, and vichara is the bee walking around um, picking up the pollen or something, you know, exploring and being, you know, wandering around on the flower, on the, on the flower. The word vichara uh, comes from the word chara, to walk, to wander. And so this idea that we're wandering, we're staying with, we're feeling. And some uh, translators, some meditation teachers translate vichara as evaluating, uh, kind of a little bit kind of being there and kind of discovering the experience, uh, getting to know it better, feeling it, letting it register more fully. So vitaka is uh, connecting to the breath or allowing the breathing to connect to you and your awareness. And then vichara is sustaining that attention over time, 
lingering there, resting in that, uh, letting go into the whole experience of exhale. So you're really there, bicharaing, uh, uh, cruising on, resting in, uh, polishing, being polished by the exhale. The whole length of the exhale stays in awareness. And then the same for the inhale. Connect to the inhale, the whole inhale. And this vitaka and vichara are relevant to some degree at the beginning of each breath, each inhale and each exhale. There's a connection, and then there's a resting, sustaining in it. Now this idea of connecting and then sustaining through time, just uh, it's uh, sustaining will always uh, stop, will always come to an end. And so it's always going to be a time to do it again and again. Sometimes the sustaining can be a long time, um, really long, it's just there and it's hard, you know, your mind's not going to wander off. But more often, especially near the beginning, it wanders off quickly and the sustaining doesn't have much momentum. The analogy I, I like for this uh, vitaka and vichara is uh, a push scooter. You have one foot on the top of the scooter and the other foot is pushing the ground and pushing you along. And if you give yourself a good push, then the momentum will carry you for a while and you don't have to push for a while. But the momentum eventually, uh, unless you're going down a steep hill, the momentum kind of fades away, uh, disappears, and then you have to push again. And, and then you glide along. And, you know, when I was a kid and did a scooter, I never complained about having to push again to get the momentum going, get the momentum going. So sometimes as we start developing concentration in practice, um, these two movements of the little uh, pushing, the tuck, the bitaka, a uh, little tap, and then, um, and then gliding along, allowing ourselves to be glided along, allowing ourselves to be carried uh, along as we go. And, uh, and then when we need to do the other kind of connection again, little push again, here we go, push again, and then ride it, ride it, ride it. As, as uh, the practice deepens and these two intentions, it's, it's intentional to connect or allow the breath to connect to us. It's intentional to linger and ride it or to let it r- wash over us, the whole experience. As you do that um, and you kind of settle into the practice more and more, at some point, this uh, need for vitaka and vichara, connecting and sustaining, uh, falls away, and we're just really right there, and, and there's no, you know, we're just there and just cruising along, and we're not, no intentionality, no thought is needed to keep going that way. And um, so, the, finally, what I'd like to say is that these two things that I'm talking about today: the initial connection and the sustaining of the connection of awareness. Uh, if you want to experiment with it, um, see, see if you can find a way to do it that's calm, relaxed, spacious, without expectation or demand that it be in any, any kind of way. See if you can actually make it kind of fun or nice or enjoyable. So you actually, you like doing it. You want to come and do it. It's not, it doesn't feel like work. Just like for a kid, pushing a scooter is not work. So... Thank you very much for being here and I'll continue the theme of Samadhi uh, tomorrow and, and take it to the next level maybe. And, um, and I've said it many times now, but I feel um, very appreciative and, and a lot of gratitude for being able to do this together with all of you. So thank you. <laughs>